We're going to do a couple of four-part writing examples in MuseScore um, and then analyze them using Roman numerals. Uh, we'll be using a third-party font, Sicilian numerals, to do the analysis. We'll start off with the Create New Score uh, dialog and uh, we'll put in our title. This is Tutorial 2 for this class. And our name. And we'll just go ahead and create our own score. Um, this is a uh, four-part writing exercise, so we need a grand staff. And it starts in the key of F. And it starts in 3-4. And there are two examples, each of them five measures, so we need a total of ten measures. And so now we have that. Let's go ahead and set up our score a little bit. We'll go up to uh, the Plugins menu and select Break Every X measures, and we'll set that to 5. And so now we have two systems with five measures each. We want to change the key signature for the second example to B minor, so we use the shortcut K. And we'll select our key signature and drag it there. We also want to then change the meter to 440. Oh, by the way, notice that. Um, in MuseScore, you have to change the key on both staves, even on a grand staff. Um, so uh, while it makes it quite easy to do polytonal music, it, uh, you have to, it's an extra step when it's not. Okay, Time signature, um, we will change to 4-4 or common time. We'll use common time. And fortunately, that goes on both staves. All right. um, we have these courtesy key signature and uh, time signatures there, so we're going to we'll go up to the style menu, select edit general style, and to the page, and we'll turn off courtesy time signature and courtesy T signature. Okay, so those are gone. Um, we do need also a bar line. We'll just go over here and grab the double bar and bring it over here. So now we have our bar lines. We're ready to go ahead and enter in our notes. Um, so let's go ahead. Um, we'll start out. We either type N or click this N here. And now we're ready to enter. The shortcuts are the same as finale. So that means that our first note, a half note, is selected by pressing 6. And I can play it in using my MIDI keyboard. Oops. Okay, if you make a mistake, the backspace key, um, when you want to add a dot, you have to do it the same way in Sibelius now and add the dot before you enter the note. All right, we'll go ahead and now go ahead and enter in the second example's soprano line. Now, as, it, as with all other, all other notation programs, we have to, to enter two lines on one staff with stems going in opposite directions. We use either voices or layers. We'll go back to the very beginning. And then we're going to up here click voice two. And we're ready to enter again. And so we'll go ahead and start entering the alto line in voice two. And you'll notice that stems will automatically change when necessary. And so now they're in two different directions. And then our second line as well, second example. Oops, a couple of mistakes there. It's the same procedure for the tenor and the bass. Um, we will be using a layer 1 and 2, not 3 and 4. So we'll press the N key, and then we press our 6 and our dot, and we can go ahead and begin entering in our notes. Oops. 
Once again, I need a dot there. beginning again and select layer 2 and our first note base note And then finally, our last line. With our notes in, we can now go ahead and do the analysis. Um, the first thing we need to do is we need to set the text. The, Font, style the font. So we go up to the style menu, select edit text style. We'll be using the lyric tool and we'll be using the first lyric, so lyric odd lines. And we want to change this to a third party font that I've used and I like quite a bit called Sicilian numerals. It's very easy to work with. Um, it's a double precision font, so I usually set it to 18. Um, so it gives it just uh, makes it a little bit more readable. We'll click OK. So now we click the first note. And then use the command L shortcut for lyrics, and we can begin typing in our example. Um, using 1 and 5, either upper or lower case for our um, Roman numerals, and then ordinal, cardinal numbers for... When you have to use two numbers, as in 6-4, press the shift key to make the, the 6 go up as a superscript, and then press the 4, and you'll have a subscript. And so it's very easy to put these in. And one. Same thing again, shift 6 and then 4. You can make your... Okay. Zero or O is the diminished symbol. As you can see, you can decide to make your, oops. And if you make a mistake, just press the shift key and the space bar to go backwards. I did it again, forgot my six. Okay, so there's our analysis. To enter in the keys, we'll have to use one of the text tools. Um, I find it a little easier to zoom in when I do this. And so now I'm going to, then I need to select the note first, and then go up and select text, staff text. And you can see there's a shortcut which we'll use next. All right, now I'm going to type F. And then once it's in, I have to click on it and drag it. And that's why I zoomed in, because it was too easy to grab the note. Okay, I'd also like that to be bigger. So let's go ahead and take that up to uh, 12. Looks about right. All right. And so now let's do the same thing here. We'll use the shortcut to get to the staff text this time. And we'll call it B. And as you can see, I'm going to have a bit of a problem grabbing it. Oh, I got lucky. Okay, we'll double click that again and we'll also make that take that up to 12. All right, to finish up, we're looking pretty good. The only thing we need to do is get rid of the staff names here. We'll right click it, select staff properties, and just delete the names. And then it comes out to the margin. So now we're done.